Hello, uh, my name is Katie Deepwell and I am the editor of this book, Feminist Art Activisms and Artivisms. And I just briefly want to introduce the book and uh, present some of the major projects within it. Uh, an anthology is always a plural entity. Different voices participate in its construction. And this is all the more so when there are 33 different essays within the anthology. The, the book arose at a conference I organized at Middlesex in 2018. And there were many speakers and panelists. The concept of the book is divided between two sections. One, feminist art activisms and artivisms and the second, art activisms and artivisms. The premise of the book is that the line between these two things has become blurred. You can find activisms of different kinds about women's roles, women's roles as creative individuals, women's roles as teachers and mothers, women's roles as citizens, participating in critiques of neoliberalism in immigration policy, you can find questions about identity politics, people sharing the same name as in the lexicon of Tanya Ostich. You can find issue-based politics, looking at domestic labor and its exploitation, and then more extreme forms of street activism like Pussy Riot. Protests where women take off their clothes to reveal their anger and their frustration at sexism and ageism. Protests which take the form of posters, uh, for example, Lorraine Leeson's or Alexandra Coley's essay about Brides Against the Bomb. Marissa Karneski's Menstruanauts protesting against the silencing of debates about menstruation. Protests about monumental activism in the dinner party as a monument to history. Protests about historical narratives that are forgotten or suppressed. In this case, Elizabeth McCausland's writing. Protests about recovering history of textile production and conservation or different kinds of history of the working class. Back to women's domestic labor in India, Genital Marwa's photographs and the real situation of protests against uh, domestic labor is explored. Activism against nuclear power and against the pollution of the planet. Activism which is changing and challenging what and how we learn and what kind of histories and voices we learn about as important in the construction of art. Fictional dialogues in terms of conversations between Palestinians and uh, Israelis and colonial histories which could be revisited. These are some of the themes in this um, presentation of the book. But I also wanted to stress that although the book came about because of a conference which invited people largely from the UK, women did travel from Austria, Italy, Germany, Czech Republic, Israel and the Netherlands to this event. And you can see already in the countries and contexts that I presented that the former Yugoslavia, China, India, Russia, Iran, Estonia, America, Lithuania, Poland, South Africa, and New Zealand are all embraced by the arguments within the book. The final thing I wanted to say is that pluralism is not a defense of the status quo in a liberal democracy. In a pluralist society, we will collectively value difference in sites, techniques, practices, context, histories, and media. It's not a collapse of distinctions, but an importance of recognizing distinctions, which might, we hope, generate new and surprising coalitions, new kinds of experimental political actions and discursive approaches to politics, a new radical democratic, socialist or anarchist view.
of the world. Thank you. Teresa Allbor. I'm a member of a collective called Grace, Grace, Grace. Um, we have a chapter in the book, which is our manifesto. And just wanted to say that being part of this book and this process, as many processes are, it's, it's, it's very cathartic. Uh, Katie wrote in the introduction that she wrote about a plural entity, different voices. And I think by bringing us together, themes emerge, which may not have been visible before. Um, and she also wrote, in the book that things can only be understood as a whole, which I think is very important. Um, and she asked this question whether these projects are there to reinforce each other. And they actually do reinforce the point that there's a multiplicity of ways to think about feminist strategy. And um, my selling point for the book is it's, it's, again, as written in the introduction, it's full of tactics for how to change art and how to pursue different lines of inquiry, inquiry, different techniques and practices and different sites or locations or contexts that are pursued at different moments in time. So I think it should be on everybody's bookshelf who is engaged in or interested in, in femi feminine politics or feminist politics, gender politics and art. And I'm now gonna hand over to Lara. Um, Laura Malakat. I, um, I wrote about the Little Book of Answers, which is a, a project that challenges citizenship practice in the UK. So I made a little book that contains only the correct answers of the citizenship test, and it becomes the device to activate a series of participatory performances that starts from the gallery and then move into the public space. So um, this isn't propaganda, this is a way of reappraise the, and our understanding of citizenship practice of what kind of knowledge do we have to commit to memory? And by scrutinizing this knowledge, by creating a space to comment on what it is, we soon realize that this knowledge is committed to patriarchal and neoliberal values. And, um, and this is a project that has adapted to um, different contexts. So I call it a, a methodology. So it's not an, a fixed artwork that has to exist in the gallery, but it's gone to public spaces to interact with different cohorts. Um, over the course of five years. So I'm creating a reappraisal of the project in the book and uh, I'm delighted to be part of this collective pluralist project. Thank you. Hello, um, my name's Camille Waring. I authored chapter 16 on the way marginalised women use photography in online spaces. I just wanted to say, as an Australian, as a Melbournean, it's so great to be asked to be included in this international book. I guess my chapter was all about how the digital democratisation of photography has allowed for a new emergent area of photography, which is visual activism, and how we can really harness the power of photography as a feminist tool to fight patriarchal structures of oppression. Like I said, it's wonderful to be able to be seen in Melbourne. It's wonderful to be able to read in Melbourne and it's great to be here. Thank you.